What's up developers, it's Dari here and welcome back to a new video where we're going to continue on with the 7th episode of our Filament PHP video series where we're going to use everything we've learned so far and build the resources for our categories, orders and customers. Up until this point, we have to find the products and brands resources. I want to continue on with the customers, orders and categories resources right now and I want to define it relatively quickly since we should be able to define the table and forms on our resources. Now let's navigate back to the CLI because we need to make a new resource. Let's say PHP Artisan make me a new filament dash resource and let's name it customer. All right, let's navigate back to PHP Storm. Let's open our customer resource and let's define a couple properties first. The model property is fine. The navigation icon I need to change it to hero icon dash o dash user dash group. Then I want to define a protected static int, which is for the navigation sort, where I want to set the value equal to two. And I want to define the navigation group. So let's say protected static, which is a string with the name of navigation group. And the group is shop. All right, this should be enough for now. So let's scroll down to the bottom right inside of the table method. We're going to define the columns or let's say text column for the in name. The name is obviously sortable and it's also searchable. Then we're going to add the second column, which will also be a text column. The column name will be email and we're going to chain the sortable and the searchable methods on it. Then we have the phone number of a customer. So let's create a new text column for the phone. We're gonna once again, chain the sortable method and we're also gonna chain the searchable method to it. Two more because I want to add the city as well. So let's create another text column for the city. It's sortable and it is searchable. Now the last one is the date of birth of a user, which will also be a text column. The column name is date underscore of underscore birth. I'm going to chain the date method to it and it's not searchable, but it is sortable. Nothing fancy. If we navigate back to Google Chrome, refresh it and open the customers tab, you'll see that we don't see any data. So let's click on new customer and let's define our form. So let's navigate back to PHP Storm. Oh, let's scroll up a little bit right inside of the form method. And there's one thing that I want to do different right here. And that's not adding our input fields into groups, which I have done when we defined the product resource and the brand resource. Groups are used to configure multiple fields at once without affecting styling. It basically gives you the ability to save all fields to a relationship or JSON or set them all to use inline labels. So personally, I would say that you should add the group when you add a second section to that column, which we don't have in this case. So right here, we're going to directly create a new section and we're going to change the schema method on our section and pass in an array. And let's define a couple input fields right here. The first one will be a text input. The name is for the name. It's going to have a maximum value of 50 characters. And the name is obviously required. Then we're going to create another text input, which will be for the email. We're going to give a label to it, which will be email address. We're going to chain another method to it, which is required. Another method, which is the email method, which will basically do the email validation part for you. Then we're going to add the unique method to it which has an ignore record of true. Now we have a couple more fields left. So let's create another one, which is a text input. The text input is for the column phone and it is max value of 50. Now let's add a date picker because we obviously need to add the date of birth as well. We have another field, which is a text input for the city and the city is required. We have one more, which is a text input, which will be for the zip code. 
and that is required as well. And finally, we have the last text input, which will be for the address. And the address is required. And we're going to add the column span right here. So let's say column span full. This only works when we add the columns method on our section. And we're going to pass in two columns. If we navigate to the browser and refresh it, you will see that we can create a new customer right here. So let's say code with Dari. Let's add my email address right here. I'm going to add a random phone number. I'm going to add my real date of birth. The city is Utrecht. I'm not going to add my zip code and I'm not going to add my private address. Now let's quickly create one. All right. As you can see, our resource has been created. Let's click on customer and right here you will see the table overview as well. Now there's one more thing that I want to do right here and that's navigating back to PHP Storm. Scroll down to the table method and let's go right inside of the actions method. Or let's get rid of the added action. Let's define a new action group right here. Let's pass in an array and let's define three actions. Let's say view action. All right, let's say edit action. All right, and the last one will be the delete action. Well, let's navigate back to Google Chrome, refresh it, and right here you will see the three actions that we have defined. Now we have defined the customer's tab, so let's move on by navigating to the CLI, and let's define a new PHP artisan make me a filament dash resource, and let's name it order. All right, let's navigate back to PHP Storm. Well, let's open our order resource. And right here, we don't need to change the model. We're going to change the navigation icon to hero icon dash O dash shopping dash bag. We're going to define the navigation sort. So let's say protected static int, which is a navigation sort, which will be equal to three. Then I want to define the navigation group as well. So let's say protected static string which is for the navigation group, which is equal to shop. All right, let's scroll to the bottom to the table method because I want to define the actions real quick. And once again, well, let's actually navigate to the customer resource and let's copy the actions. This is nothing special. Paste it inside of it. All right, now let's define the table fields right inside of the columns method. Let's start off with the order number, which is a text column. So let's say number, let's chain the searchable method to it, and let's also chain the sortable method to it. I want to add another column, which is the customer name, which is through a relationship. So let's say text column. It needs to look on the relationship named customer, and it needs to find the name. And this needs to be searchable. It needs to be sortable. And it is optional, so a user can toggle it. Then I want to add a text column of the status, which is the enum that we have defined. So let's say status. It is searchable. And it is also sortable. All right, let's add a column for the total price. So let's say total underscore price. Let's change the searchable method to it. The sortable method. And we're going to chain a new method to it, which is the summarize method. In filament PHP, the summarize method is used to display a summarized value for a column. For example, you can use the summarize method to display the total sum of a value in a column. Let's pass in an array inside of it. Now let me scroll down. We're going to call the sum method. We're going to pull it in from tables backslash columns backslash summarize. And then we're going to chain the money methods to it. Now there's one more column that I want to add, which is a text column. The text column is for the created underscore at. We're going to change the label method to it, which will be order date. And it obviously needs to be a date. All right, now let's scroll up and let's define the form fields as well. Now let's think about it for a moment. We have a couple input fields that will enter data in a forms table. But we also need to create a screen where we can add products to the order. Instead of creating a separate page for that functionality, 
we can use a wizard, which is a very cool feature that Filament PHP offers. A wizard is basically a user interface that will break down complex tasks into smaller, more manageable steps. It guides the user through each step in a clear and concise manner, making it easy for them to complete the task without feeling overwhelmed or confused. So let's define our wizard right here. Let's remove our comment and let's say wizard. Now let's pull in the filament forms component. We're gonna make a wizard where we're gonna pass in an array where we're going to define a wizard step. So let's say step. Now let's pull in a filament backslash forms backslash components backslash wizard. And we're gonna add a label to our first step of order details. Then we're gonna define a schema on it, pass in an array where in here we need to define our fields. But before we do that, uh, let's define the second step by basically calling the step, we're gonna name it order items and we're gonna change the schema method to it, same stuff over and over, where we're gonna pass in a comment. Now, before I forget it, I want to add the columns span full method on our second step. If we navigate back to the browser and refresh it, open the orders tab and click on new order, you will see that we have defined a wizard with two steps. Step number two is the order details, and step number two is the order items. Once you click on next, you will see that step number one has been completed and we're currently on step number two. But something has gone wrong with the columns full and I needed to add it on the wizard itself. Excuse me, refresh it and all right, this is what you want to see. Now let's define the fields inside of it, starting with the order details. It has a text input with the name of number. We're gonna chain a default value to it, which will be a string of OR of order dash. And we're gonna concatenate the random underscore int method, which is the PHP method, which should be a random number of 100,000. And let's say nine, 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 and another nine. We're gonna add a disabled method to it because the default value will be randomly generated. So you don't want to give the user the option to add the order number. We're gonna add the dehydrated method to it and also the required method. Then we're gonna create the customer ID. So let's say select for the customer underscore ID. We're gonna chain the relationship method to it because it is a relationship from the customer relationship. And we're gonna add a second argument, which is the column that you want to show to the user, which in our case will be name. We're not done yet because we're gonna chain the searchable method to it and also the required methods. Now we have two more fields left because we have the type of the order as well. So let's say select. We're gonna make a type and it has options, obviously. And the options are basically our enum options. So let's say pending, which will be order status enum pending and chain the value method. Now let's actually duplicate our line four times. The second option will be processing. We have completed and we have declined. Now let's change the order type, which will be processing, completed, and we have declined. Finally, we need to add one more, which is for the notes, which will be added in a markdown editor. And we're gonna keep it as it is, and we're gonna chain one method to it, which will be the column span full again. And right on our wizard tab, we're gonna chain the columns method, and it needs to be two columns next to each other. All right, let's navigate back to Google Chrome, refresh it you'll see that this looks pretty dope, but let's make the type full span as well. So let's say column span full. Once we refresh it, you'll see that this looks pretty good. And every time we refresh it, you will see a new order number, which is pretty cool. Is there anything missing? Well, let's actually make the type required as well. And I think that we're done. Well, let's continue on with the order items on step number two. Right here, we need to define a relationship with the products table. 
since the data that we will add right here needs to be inserted in the pivot table, which was a many to many relationship. So let's define a select. The name will be product underscore ID, which we won't show to the user. So let's change the label method to it and let's name it product. We're gonna chain the options method to it, but we're not gonna pass in an array, but we're gonna use our product model. We're gonna chain the query method to it, and we're gonna chain the pluck method to it. And what we're gonna do right here is basically pluck the name and the ID. Now the pluck method is useful here because it allows us to extract a list of values from a specific columns of the products table in our database. We're basically going to extract the name and ID columns which we then use to populate the options for our select input field in the form. This basically makes it easier for users to select a product by name, while the ID is still used to identify the products in the database. So we have a couple more fields right here. The second field that I want to add is a text input for the quantity. It is numeric. It has a default value of one and it is required. Now, finally, I want to add the unit price, which will be a text input, unit underscore price. It has a label of unit price. It is disabled. It is dehydrated. It is a numeric value and it is required. Now, right on our wizard, we're gonna chain the columns method, which needs to show three items next to each other. Let's navigate back to Google Chrome and refresh it. Uh, let's add a type right here. The customer is Dari. And let's add a note of text. Click on next. And right here, you will see our second step. But I have a small issue right here. In our model, we have to find a many to many relationship, meaning that one order has many items. Right now, we only have the option to define one product. What Filament PHP allows us to do right here is creating a repeater component. And a repeater component is used to create a repeating set of form fields. It allows users to add and remove fields as needed, making it useful for situations where the number of fields required may vary. So what we can do right here is basically navigating back, scroll up to our schema on our, where is it, order items, copy all the fields that we have inside of it, remove it for a second, and on the schema, we're gonna create a repeater from filament backslash forms backslash components. The repeater has a name of items, and we're gonna chain the relationship method to it and the schema method to it, where we're gonna pass in an array, paste the fields that we just copied, navigate back to Google Chrome, refresh it, add a customer again, add the option and notes. And right here, you can see that we have the option to add new items, which will add new boxes where we could select the product quantity and unit price of multiple products. Something went wrong with the styling again. So let's navigate back to PHP store. And what we need to do right here is basically copying the columns and adding it on the repeater. Once we navigate back to Google Chrome, create a new order, add a customer of Dari again, the type, the notes, click on next. And right here, you will see that we have fixed our repeater. If we click on add new item, it will add it right below a bit. Pretty cool, but we're not gonna focus on the relationship right now because we will do that in the relationship chapter. So for now, I want to continue on with the categories resource which will be the simplest one. So let's navigate back to the CLI. Let's perform the PHP artisan make me a filament dash resource. I'll let's name it category. Let's navigate back to PHP storm. Well, let's close off all tabs that we have opened. Well, let's open our category resource. Now let's start off by defining the properties again. We need the model. The navigation icon will be hero icon dash O dash tag. We're gonna define a protected static int for our navigation sort, which will be equal to four. And finally, we need to define a navigation group. So let's say protected static 
string which is navigation group which will be set equal to shop now let's open our product resource or let's copy the actions that we have open our category resource and scroll to the bottom and replace it inside our actions method we're going to define the columns right now which is pretty straightforward we have a text column for the category name which will be sortable and it's also searchable we need to add a text column because we added a parent relationship dot name because a category can have a parent category we're going to chain the label method to it which will be parent we're going to chain the searchable method to it and we're going to add the sortable method to it now a category can be visible or hidden so let's define a icon column for the is underscore visible column we're going to chain the label method to it which will be visibility we're going to chain the boolean method to it and it can be sortable the final table column will be a text column as well for the updated underscore add it is obviously a date we're going to chain a new label to it which will be updated date and finally it can be sortable now we're almost done because we need to define the form as well all right let's first create a group right here we're gonna chain the schema method to it and pass in an array hit enter create a section right here do the same thing and I actually want to navigate to our product resource and scroll up and copy the slug and the name because it's quite a lot of code that we need to rewrite again so paste it right here and right below the slug we're going to define a markdown editor for the description and we're going to chain the column span full method to it and then on our section we're going to chain the columns method where we're going to add two columns now right below our what is it group we're going to define a new group by adding a comma saying group we're going to make it chain a schema method to it pass in an array and right here we're going to define a new section for the status let's define the last schema and let's define a toggle the toggle will be for the is underscore visible column we're going to chain the label method to it for the visibility we're going to add a helper text of enable or disable category visibility and finally we're going to add a default value of true i want to add one more field right here where we're going to give the user the option to select a parent category so let's say select parent underscore id we're going to chain the relationship method to it which will be the parent relationship and the name column should be visible so let's navigate back to google chrome let's refresh it click on categories create a new category or let's name it hosting the description will be hosting it is visible and it has no parent because we're going to create our first category and right here you will see that we have been prompted with a message saying that it has been created let's click on categories and you will see that we have created our first category for now i want to wrap up this video where we have to find a customer order and category resources and fill them in php now this was it for today's video, if you enjoyed the content and you want to see more, please give this video a thumbs up and if you're new to this channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button.